the top stories. State of emergency extended until December 31st. Prime Minister Harris to preside over annual budget estimates committee meetings this week. And the Department of Agriculture honors the Federation's food heroes. The details on these stories are more after the break. In your formative years, Come on. we were there. When you got the good news and the bad, we were right there with you. Through all your great adventures, we were always right by your side. Now that life has thrown us a curveball, we are still here. And as we navigate this difficult period, the SKCCU will continue to be there for you and your family to help you through. We will assist you in safely and efficiently accessing your funds through our digital platforms, online banking, mobile banking, ATMs, and even our drive through services. We can get through this together with responsible financial decisions by making food and medication a priority, practicing proper hygiene, maintaining social distancing, and constant prayer. We are here for you. We are still here. We will get through this together. SKCCU will continue to be your financial partner for life. Dr. Blake's General Dentistry and Orthodontics located on South Independence Square Street in Bastyr is the place to discover that perfect smile you have always dreamt of. With convenient hours to serve you, Dr. Blake's Dental assures the best preventative and restorative care to guarantee the health and beauty of your smile. Call 466-7622 for your appointments. Hello and welcome to the Zadaiza Channel 5 Newscast. I'm Carla Berridge. Attorney General Honorable Vincent Byron says the government has deemed it necessary to extend the state of emergency as it moves over the next few weeks to have a second reading for the COVID-19 prevention and control bill that had its first reading on October 15, 2020. Speaking at a sitting of Parliament on October 15th, the Attorney General said that the government has found it necessary to keep the state of emergency in place during the stipulated period October 19th to December 31st. The current statutory rules and orders, SR and O, that is in place covering the regulations under the Emergency Powers Act will be extended during that same period. Attorney General Byron stated that it is open to the Parliament to return at any time to revoke the state of emergency by resolution once the COVID-19 Prevention and Control Bill has passed and they are satisfied that the measures that it covered and the regime that is, is intended to establish works to protect all citizens. Attorney General Byron said that the government is mindful of the need to be careful as it extends its state of emergency and noted that the state of emergency gives the medical team and the compliance team the tools by which they can ensure that the people of St. Kitts and Nevis are protected. The extension of the state of emergency will not hinder the reopening of the borders on October 31st. The government of St. Kitts and Nevis commenced its annual budgetary process on Monday through the Budget Estimates Committee meetings that is this year being formulated in the context of the challenges brought about by the global COVID-19 pandemic. The Budget Estimates Committee meetings are meetings of the Cabinet at which time line ministries are required to present their plans for the upcoming budget year, account for their performance or lack thereof during the current year, and assure Cabinet that their policies, programs and activities are being pursued with diligence, care and in accordance with the law and best practices. Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, Dr. The Honorable Timothy Harris, spoke of what the process entails. It is a legal obligation and an obligation of accountability which we attempt to respond to simultaneously. And the exercise in which we are engaged today 
and for the rest couple days would help us come up with the estimates that are going to be we led the framework for the appropriation um, bill and the subsequent actions that will take place thereafter. Prime Minister further stated that as the government looks ahead to 2021, the most significant challenge it faces is that of COVID-19, which has destabilized economies all around the world. The advice now is that we have to make our priority sustaining the recovery and that required that in our budgeting process, we pay attention to resource allocation and we prioritize them. There are certain things that we will try to do. One, to pay attention to the economic infrastructure build out, because that is critical if we are to reclaim the recovery. We want to, of course, pay attention to activities and the capital level that will generate jobs because this is critical to bring in normalcy and giving people spending power in a sustained way. Financial Secretary in the Government of St. Kitts and Nevis, Mrs. Hilary Hazel, reiterated the challenge of the COVID-19 pandemic on the budgetary process. She, however, noted that the Federation has in the past risen above challenges and is confident that it will again in this regard. Part of the discussions during the next four days of Estimates Committee would be how do we strike the balance to have the government continue to be a player in terms of spurring on economic growth as well as maintaining some semblance of fiscal prudence. We have faced adversity before. Even though the COVID-19 pandemic presents um, challenges that have not been presented in past crises, we can use some of those lessons from the past to help to guide us in terms of our stabilization and uh, stimulation of the economy. The Budget Estimates Committee meetings are expected to run from Monday, October 19th to Thursday, October 22nd at the Ministry of Finance Conference Room. Officials from the Ministry of Justice and Legal Affairs, the Office of the Attorney General, Social Development and Gender Affairs, Foreign Affairs and Aviation, and the Office of the Prime Minister all made presentations during today's session. The Department of Agriculture recognized the Federation's farmers in a prize-giving ceremony held at the Department's conference room last week. Shani Kavi has the details. The prize-giving ceremony comes as part of the Department of Agriculture's week of activities to commemorate World Food Day on October 16, 2020. The awards were given across three categories, the crop sector, livestock subsector, and the Marine Resources Department. Minister of Agriculture, Fisheries, and Marine Resources, Honorable Alexis Jeffers, spoke of the profitability of the agricultural sector, noting that this can help to transform the sector over the next five years agriculture can pay yellow is an example many other examples inside here as well too and that is why I have this gut feeling that over the next five years we can transform agriculture I have said to the persons in the ministry and in the department that we have to be able to build relationships with our farmers at all levels we depend on our farmers tremendously for them to produce. For them to produce, they need what is necessary, the infrastructure and all of the implement and all of the, the inputs that are needed to make agriculture the success that it can be. He also reaffirmed the ministry and the department's commitment to providing the needs of the farmers despite the challenges. I want to make that commitment this evening that the department and ministry of agriculture here on Sinkits I'm speaking to you here in St. Kitts now, that we are committed to ensuring that you receive what you need. There will be challenges. Of course, there will be challenges with water. There will be challenges with infrastructure. There will be challenges with getting the plow when you need it. But in spite of all those challenges, well, there will be challenges with monkeys as well. And 
wild animals will uh, invade your farms. But in spite of those challenges and in spite of those difficulties, we have still been able to produce at a reasonable level, but the challenges should not stop us from pursuing and pressing on. And I want us to have that recomm co committed attitude towards agriculture so that we can press on and produce more. Awards were first given to the two winners of the World Food Day poster competition, followed by recipients from the crop sector being awarded in the best farm categories, which includes best farm in the backyard, between one to five acres, greater than five acres, best farm in fruit and tree crop, and protective agriculture. Under the livestock subsector category, awards were given for the best managed large ruminant farm, small ruminant farm, pig farm, small poultry farm, and rabbit farm. The final category from the Marine Resources Department saw recipients being awarded for the advances in aquaculture, most reliable supplier to Bastyr Fisheries Complex, Coastal Pelagics Fishery, and Ocean Pelagics Fishery. Reporting for ZIZ News, I am Shanique Harvey. And in other national news, the Ministry of Agriculture is continuing with efforts to bolster food security, access and availability by providing seeds and seedlings to groups in various communities to encourage community gardening. The gardens will be opened in several communities across the island. While in Kayon, representatives from the Department of Agriculture joined with members from the Ilim Chapel Gospel Hall for a brief handing over of seedlings. Chair of the World Food Day Activities, Tonisha Weeks, and Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Ron Dublin Collins, presented the group with four different types of seedlings, cucumbers, cabbages, tomatoes, and sweet peppers. Marilyn Claxton and Cal Keynes accepted the seedlings on behalf of the church. Both members thanked the Agriculture Department for the assistance and shared that the garden will aid in the church's fundraising efforts to help purchase a new bus. Natasha Daniel of the Department of Agriculture said as a member of the church, she is extremely pleased with the initiative. I have been going to this church since I was a little girl. And I said to myself, but um, Sister Marilyn, we need to do something for the church. And so I decided to turn over this area and the area to the back where they have pumpkins so that the church in their effort to raise funds for their, their bus, to get a new bus for the church that we would work together to get this done. And so, um, you know, we will continue to partner with the other community gardens as well as the church so that they could um, be successful in their endeavors. In addition, another group who identifies as the Trafalgar Women's Group also was also presented with cucumbers, cabbages, tomatoes, and sweet pepper seedlings. Mrs. Sharon Bradshaw of the Trafalgar Women's Group said the women are grateful for the support. I think it's probably by divine providence that we're here because the Trafalgar Women's Group and the Agricultural Department both seem to have had the same idea at the same time. And I thank you for your promptness. We called for advice as to what to do and you all promptly responded. And we are here now with all these um, startup kits. If, if I can call them that, the, the slips and the ground cover, etc. So we are very, very grateful. And we know for sure we're going to go forward. The persons in the village need access to food, access to healthy food. A community garden was also opened in St. Peter's under the management of the St. Kisnevis Association of Persons with Disabilities. The group received seedlings and gardening tools, as well as farming equipment. The community garden openings formed part of the World Food Day activities in observance of World Food Day on Friday, October 16th. After the break, Prime Minister Harris to discuss the national budget with Accountant General on Tuesday's edition of Leadership Matters and mosquito fogging to begin this week. Stay with us. Use your National Bank Visa debit card five times or more weekly for a chance to win a $500 shopping spree. Compliments of National Bank. So think twice the next time you want to use cash. Choose your National Bank Visa debit card instead because you might be the next lucky winner. What's going on? Tony Frederick! You've just won National Bank's Cashless SKN $500 weekly shopping sweepstakes. Use your National Bank.
Central Bank Visa Debit Card every transaction for a chance to be the next lucky winner. I've just never won anything before in my life. Cashless SKN is our new lifestyle choice. National Bank, always here. Always here. For this year 2020, we at Smart Electronics have the perfect vision so we can see clearly what you want and what you need. So we go the extra mile to provide you, our valued customers, with special deals, incomparable prices, and the lowest prices in the entire federation on all gadgets and electronics storewide. Oh my god! Oh my god! God. Yes, you heard right. All gadgets and electronics store-wide. We have cell phones, laptop computers, Bluetooth speakers, smart TVs, washing machines, refrigerators, toaster ovens, blenders, juice extractors, phone accessories, and much more. So no need to go to St. Martin anymore. We have everything you need right here in St. Kitts. And remember, we only have one store and we're located at Port Zante, opposite the food court. Telephone 466-4271. Smart Electronics way to live a smart life terms and conditions apply oh my god oh my god <laughs> lord lord son please don't hit me anymore i love you i don't care you're old and feeble and i can't take on helping you every minute you want me to help you to beard wash your hair put on clothes help you take your meds i fed up you're useless and get somebody to help me now with what your social security is mine your pension is mine i ain't got time to pay nobody to help you you gonna stay there and rot lord please help me lord somebody help me gender-based violence is not just domestic violence or gang violence it's also violence against older persons if you or someone older is being abused Contact the Community Development Office or Social Services at 467-1314. This message was brought to you by the Department of Gender Affairs in collaboration with the Pan-American Health Organization, PAHO. Five, six. I have natural hair. I have brown eyes. I am a Calypsonian. I am a dancer. I am a gold medal special Olympian. I love all things craft. I am a graphics designer. I am a motivational speaker. But we can't put those skills to work for you. If we are not given the opportunity. If you don't have an open mind. If you don't honor workplace diversity. If you don't hire us. If you don't realize that we work best together. Together, we are differently able. And it's what we can do. It's what we can do. It's what we can do that matters. To support this cause, contact the St. Kitts and Nevis Association of Persons with Disabilities at 465-2151.
remember to wash your hands thoroughly and frequently before and after preparing food, after using the toilet or changing a diaper for a baby, sick person, or the elderly, after blowing your nose, and after leaving large gatherings or moving away from persons who appear ill. Encourage others to wash their hands and also use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer of 60 to 70% solution. Stay away from events having large gatherings of people. You can expose yourself to more possible infections in large groups. Also, avoid sharing cutlery, cups, glassware, etc. with others. Viruses can linger on these items and may be transferred this way. Avoid shaking and holding hands and hugging or keeping an infected person in close proximity. This is a message from the Ministry of Health and the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA. Whether you're at home or abroad, ZNIZ's social media platforms help you stay connected with what's going on in St. Kitts and Nevis. Keep up with daily events by liking our Facebook page. Follow us on Twitter at ZBC Online. Like our pictures on Instagram and subscribe to our videos on YouTube. Also, you can watch us live on the ZIZ mobile app and our website, ZIZonline.com. No matter where you are, ZIZ is just a click away. ZIZ Broadcasting Corporation, reaching you wherever you are. <laughs> Lord, Lord, son, please don't hit me anymore. I love you. I don't care. You're old and feeble, and I can't take on helping you. Every minute you want me to help you to bed, wash your hair, put on clothes, help you take your meds, I'm fed up. You're useless. Then get somebody to help me now. With what? Your social security is mine. Your pension is mine. I ain't got time to pay nobody to help you. You're going to stay there and rot. Lord, please help me, Lord. Somebody help me. Gender-based violence is not just domestic violence or gang violence. It's also violence against older persons. If you or someone older is being abused, contact the Community Development Office or Social Services at 467-1314. This message was brought to you by the Department of Gender Affairs in collaboration with the Pan-American Health Organization, PAHO. To avoid getting the coronavirus, Remember to wash your hands thoroughly and frequently before and after preparing food, after using the toilet or changing a diaper for a baby, sick person, or the elderly, after blowing your nose, and after leaving large gatherings or moving away from persons who appear ill. Encourage others to wash their hands and also use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer of 60-70% to 70 solution. Stay away from events having large gatherings of people. You can expose yourself to more possible infections in large groups. Also, avoid sharing cutlery, cups, glassware, etc. with others. Viruses can linger on these items and may be transferred this way. Avoid shaking and holding hands and hugging or keeping an infected person in close proximity. This is a message from the Ministry of Health and the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA. Calabis is one secret you should never keep. Stop fighting! I just poison it! Baby, you don't think this chicken is a little bit too tender? What you say? 
politics is not what tell you this to go and fix in your grateful self. I can't take this more. Let me go house first, go get yourself a new store. Alright? Let's go. Yeah, that one. Hey, mi amigo! I see you back to get the store, eh? Ugh. That chicken is no cook. I don't care what the twice say. I know. My hand sweets. You get the brand new stove and you get free groceries. Best. Come set up this one here for me, boy. You look like something at Cap. Here is how I pay my flow bills using the MyFlow app in just three easy steps. First, I downloaded the free app from the App Store. Then, I opened the app and logged in with my Flow ID. I activated my Flow ID earlier for free at flowid.co. I clicked on the account number and watched the magic begin. All my bills and the info right there at my fingertips. Just confirm the payment amount, then card details, and that's it. No trips to town, no long lines, and no hassle. Flow is keeping me connected. Bring white up crumb, rum. Till white up done. Bring more white up crumb out done. What you talking about done? Everybody say, bring it, bring it. Hey, bring the up. Bring the white up crumb. Bring it, bring it. Hey, bring the up. Bring the white up rum. This rum is one for the party. This rum is king everybody. Bring it, bring it. Hey, bring the up. Bring the white up rum. White oak, when it pours, you ring. It's showtime at Quartz. Shop today and save up to 30% off on selected Whirlpool Cooker. Plus, get a chance to win amazing weekly prizes with purchases of $299 and over. So don't delay. Get what you need now and pay absolutely nothing until 2021. Showtime. We got it. Just what you need. Yeah, Quartz got it. Welcome back. Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Timothy Harris will be headlining the 25th edition of Leadership Matters, the government's virtual forum series on Tuesday, October 20th, 2020. Joining the Prime Minister on the panel to answer questions of the listening public will be Accountant General for the Government of St. Kitts and Nevis, Levi Bradshaw. The focus of the discussion will be the national budget. The virtual forum airs from 8 to 10 p.m. on ZIZ Radio 96.1 FM, television channel 5, and all ZIZ's social media platforms. The call-in numbers are 466-2666, 662-8674-767-4765, and 1239-645-4500. Questions can also be sent via WhatsApp to 661-5683. To combat an outbreak of mosquito-borne diseases, the Ministry of Health has informed that fogging in the various communities will be taking place this week. The fogging for mosquito control begins today, Monday, October 19th, in Shadwell, New Road, Gillard's Meadows, and Monkey Hill. On Tuesday, October 20th, the fogging heads to McKnight, St. Johnson, The Village, Lagreet, and Buckley's. Then on Wednesday, October 21st, fogging will take place in Lime Kiln, Camps, Ocean Gardens and Mattingly Hikes. Additionally, the fogging exercise will continue in Boyd's West Farm, Challengers and Stoneforth on Thursday, October 22nd, then Oldwood, Verlchiles, Middle Island and Lamberts on Friday, October 23rd. In a statement released on Sunday, the Ministry of Health advised householders to dispose of stored water and keep water containers closed or covered in order to prevent mosquito breeding. Persons have also been asked to keep windows and doors opened during the exercise to allow the fog to pass through the home and get rid of adult mosquitoes. The ministry has also asked that persons with sinus or respiratory illnesses, like asthma, to leave their homes before the exercise and avoid being in close proximity to the fog where possible. The fogging exercise is scheduled to begin at 6 p.m. each day. Deputy Prime Minister and former Minister of Culture, Honorable Sean Richards, has made a donation to Soka Artist Dexter Black's Stewart 
of Trinidad and Tobago who is undergoing medical treatment. At the most recent edition of Family Feud, hosted at Vibes Beach Bar at the Frigate Bay Strip, a donation drive was facilitated by Noah Mills, at which time Minister Richards presented 1,000 EC dollars. Minister Richards spoke of why he decided to make the contribution and made mention of the fact that blacks and the Roy Cape All Stars have worked with local artist Nichibi over the past few years. The blacks is associated with soca. And of course, as Ketitians and Nivisions, we well know soca and we appreciate soca here in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. Most of the the Blacks has been able to accommodate a number of artists from not just within the Caribbean region, but as indicated by Noah, our very own Nietzsche B has learned and has had the opportunity to improve the art of soccer by being on stage with Blacks. He said, as Caribbean people, we should all work together and support each other. I must add that when I was the Minister with Responsibility for Culture and by extension Carnival, we had a number of soccer artists from throughout the region who would have come here and who would have assisted us with developing the art of soccer here in St. Kitts and Nevis. As one Caribbean people, I think we need to continue to support each other. Veteran soccer artist Blacks recently underwent surgery for a kidney infection. It was reported last week that he was back in the hospital undergoing tests for fluid in his lungs and he was experiencing difficulty breathing. Blacks is known for hit songs Hulk, Tusty and Lego. And finally on the local scene, the St. Kiss Cooperative Credit Union, SKCCU, used the occasion of World Food Day on Friday to promote healthy eating through locally grown foods and healthy lifestyles with the offering of on-site health checks. The event formed part of activities to commemorate International Credit Union Day 2020, which is celebrated annually on October 19th. Marketing officer at the St. Kitts Cooperative Credit Union, Shaloida Hewlett, said the general public was invited to the event, but a special invitation was extended to members of the SKCCU. She also spoke about some of the services offered at the health drive. We have the farmers here selling produce, locally grown produce. We have Mr. Alistair James on site of IRIP Fitness Center facilitating us and he's giving us some health and fitness tips. We also have the nurses on site administering free, free of course, free blood sugar and blood pressure testing. We have free minor oral health checks from City Dental. International Credit Union Day was guided by the theme Inspiring Hope for a Global Community. It is celebrated annually on October 16th. Coming up in regional news, six nurses in Trinidad test positive for COVID-19. The details when we come back. We're leaving here with all this, okay? Talk about what going on, boy? What man are you walking up here now? Oh, you mean? Well, yes, I hear looking for something like me, sleek, smooth, and cute. <laughs> you mean who have been up and mashed up? You know in stature, you know? This cell toast has everything you're looking for. Smooth, sleek, and looking like you the Empress. Hey, I know you just come out, but I'm right here still, eh? You can hook us up with a discount hour. Oh, you mean? Plus, you get free licensing and free accessories. Now, that's a tune I like to hear. I feel like a real champion. Champion! Just like a champion. Watch a piece of money, girl. Tell me where you get it from. Knock on your inches. Rum, pum, 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 pum. Me have the chance for you, a weird pawn. Now, the man. Oh, you mean? You can do just about everything with the My Digicel app. Oh really? I need to top up my account and activate a new plan. Get it done with ease in the My Digicel app. Oh crap, the store just closed and I need to pay my postpaid and home entertainment bill. Guess what? You can use your Visa debit or credit card and pay it in the My Digicel app. I have a question about my account. Well, Ruby can help or you can live chat with an agent in the My Digicel app. It's all been made easier just for you. Simplify your life and download the new My Digicel app today. More needs simple. Showtime, shopping course. We got all the things you want. 
It's showtime at Quartz. Shop today and save up to 30% off on selected Whirlpool Cooker. Plus, get a chance to win amazing weekly prizes with purchases of $299 and over. So don't delay. Get what you need now and pay absolutely nothing until 2021. your National Bank Visa debit card five times or more weekly for a chance to win a $500 shopping spree. Compliments of National Bank. So think twice the next time you want to use cash, choose your National Bank Visa debit card instead because you might be the next lucky winner. What's going on? Tony Frederick! You've just won National Bank's Cashless SKN $500 weekly shopping sweepstakes. Use your National Bank Visa debit card every transaction for a chance to be the next lucky winner. I've just never won anything before in my life. Cashless SKN is our new lifestyle choice. National Bank, always here. Always here. And we're moving now to news on the regional scene. In Trinidad, six nurses at the Port of Spain General Hospital have tested positive for COVID-19. This was confirmed by Minister of Health Terence Dale Singh, who continued to urge health care workers to get vaccinated for the flu. Here's more. What I do know the situation at Port of Spain, because I spoke to the CEO this morning, six of those nurses have in fact tested positive and they are all the positive um, nurses are being treated at the Arima Hospital. This statement from Minister Dialsing comes just days after the TNT Registered Nurses Association President, Eddie Stewart, claimed that 18 nurses at the Port of Spain General Hospital were quarantined and tested in the past two weeks. Mr. Dialsing, though, continues to urge the general population to get the flu vaccine, especially healthcare workers, to avoid a twindemic where someone can contract both the flu and COVID-19. To date, he says just over 600 healthcare workers have been vaccinated. Overall, the minister says 15,000 plus vaccines were administered, but he's hoping this is a much larger figure in the coming weeks. Because we were hoping by now, after three weeks, we would be given out at least 10,000 per week. Uh, this week gone, we only gave out 6,789. I am particularly concerned about two categories, healthcare workers and our pregnant population. Minister Dial Singh notes that it has been a problem every year to encourage healthcare workers and even the general public to accept the flu vaccination. He says the ministry has attempted to find out why this problem exists, but noted that there are many reasons. However, the minister is hoping for a better response from the general public to limit any deaths arising out of the flu. What we are trying to avoid is for the public to hear that unfortunately someone has died of influenza and then you get this mad rush and 40,000 people descend on the health system in one day. What we are trying to do now is get vaccinations up to about 10,000 a week without panic. In the last flu season, 41 persons died from complications associated with the flu. Sonolala, TTT News. Coming up, 5 million people can't vote this November due to felony convictions. International News is next. Imagine having the luxury of putting all your trust in one insurance company and being able to enjoy a life to the fullest without having to worry. Well, don't imagine. National Caribbean Insurance is here to take care of all your insurance needs. Insure your life, vehicle, boat, home, belongings, and your future. At NCI, we make it our business to ensure that you enjoy every stage in life. We serve, we protect, we satisfy. That's NCI. You ring. For this year, 
2020, we at Smart Electronics have the perfect vision so we can see clearly what you want and what you need. So we go the extra mile to provide you, our valued customers, with special deals, incomparable prices, and the lowest prices in the entire federation on all gadgets and electronics storewide. Oh my god! Oh my god! God. Yes, you heard right. All gadgets and electronics store-wide. We have cell phones, laptop computers, Bluetooth speakers, smart TVs, washing machines, refrigerators, toaster ovens, blenders, juice extractors, phone accessories, and much more. So no need to go to St. Martin anymore. We have everything you need right here in St. Kitts. And remember, we only have one store and we're located at Port Zante, opposite the food court. Telephone 466-4271. Smart Electronics way to live a smart life terms and conditions apply oh my god oh my god welcome back five million people can't vote this november in the u.s presidential elections due to felony charges Nearly 75% of these potential voters, around 3.8 million people, have left prison but still can't cast a ballot. Here's Mark. According to a new study, more than 5 million people will not be allowed to vote in the 2020 election because of a felony conviction. That's 2.3% of the total voting age population, a big percentage in a country where elections are routinely decided by razor-thin margins. And while some of these potential voters are incarcerated, the vast majority, nearly 75 percent, are out of prison and living in the community. Every day there's a steady assembly line going through the justice system. Criminologist and professor Christopher Eugen conducted this study for the sentencing project. And the question is, you know, did, do they ever come off of that line and rejoin the rest of us in society as, you know, citizens standing shoulder to shoulder on election day? A lot of that depends on the state you live in. There's only two states that permit you to vote no matter what involvement you've had with the criminal justice system, Maine and Vermont. As it happens in my own state of Vermont, from the very first days of our state's history, what our constitution says is that everybody can vote. That is true, so people in jail can vote. But I think the right to vote is inherent to our democracy. Yes, even for terrible people. But for states like Alabama, Mississippi, and Tennessee, more than 8% of the state's population can't vote because of their criminal record. Florida was one of the last two states in the country that banned former felons from voting for life before passing a major referendum in 2018 to change that. Amendment 4 gave 1.4 million former felons the right to vote. But shortly after the law passed, Republican lawmakers added a restriction forcing voters to pay any outstanding fines, fees, or restitution before they could cast their ballot. There's a lot of people, a lot of returning citizens in Florida that are now being forced to choose between putting food on their kid's plate or voting, right? Being forced to choose between paying rent or their mortgage or voting or their life bill of voting, right? And we believe that access to the ballot box should be unencumbered and free. According to the Sentencing Project, this new law will keep more than 900,000 Floridians from voting this November. Yugen makes a direct link between the disparities in the criminal justice system and felony disenfranchisement, saying one reinforces the other. What we've been talking about with Black Lives Matter and law enforcement and courts and, and racial discrimination and criminal justice, that is all amplified and, and transmitted through the political process by the practice of disenfranchisement. According to the Sentencing Project, one in every 16 voting age black Americans nationwide is disenfranchised. That rate is nearly four times higher than non-black Americans. Um, next in sports, we have the results of the SKNFA weekend matches. And Egyptian Boxing Club vows to produce more women boxers. Stay with us. Imagine having the luxury of putting all your trust in one insurance company and being able to enjoy a life to the fullest without having to worry. Well, don't imagine. National Caribbean Insurance is here to take care of all your insurance needs. Insure your life, vehicle, boat, home, belongings, and your future. At NCI, we make it our business to ensure that you enjoy every stage in life. We serve 
We protect. We satisfy. That's NCI. Wash your hands thoroughly and frequently before and after preparing food, after using the toilet or changing a diaper for a baby, sick person, or the elderly, after blowing your nose, and after leaving large gatherings or moving away from persons who appear ill. Encourage others to wash their hands and also use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer of 60 to 70% solution. Stay away from events having large gatherings of people. You can expose yourself to more possible infections in large groups. Also, avoid sharing cutlery, cups, glassware, etc. with others. Viruses can linger on these items and may be transferred this way. Avoid shaking and holding hands, and hugging or keeping an infected person in close proximity. This is a message from the Ministry of Health and the National Emergency Management Agency. First up in sports, on Sunday, Sadler's FC and Gadden Hotspurs delivered a very entertaining match at the Wanna Park, but in the end, the team from Central Bastia prevailed with a 2-1 victory. We join Andre Huey with this report. Opposite the Enterprises, Garden Hotspurs edged fast cast Sadler's 2-1 Sunday night in the SKFA Premier League at the Warner Park in a very exciting encounter. Tristan Hanley scored an own goal in the 15th minute in favor of Spurs and DeAndre Challenger in the 51st minute made sure that Spurs were up two goals to nil. But Sadler's fought back valiantly in the second half, earning a goal from Nick Juan Phipps in the 77th minute. And they missed out on a goal some pundits believe crossed the goal line only to be booted out by a Spurs defender. Here are the highlights courtesy of SK Newsline in collaboration with the St. Kitts and Nevis Football Association. Commentators Al Edwards and Essington Watts. It's Paxson coming in for Rollins. Here is Spurs. Has a chance at goal. The shot comes in now. The shot goes between the goalkeeper's arms and into the back of the net. Two goals to nil. Very good goal indeed for Gordon Hart Spurs. So that's two nil. Um, so it's even harder work for Sadlers now um, to get back into this game. Um, so Spurs looking to get full three points from this game. So he's turning in favor of Gordon Haspo. Let's see. Trevor Hanley. Kandu Kandu goes head up. up. Goalkeeper misses. First goal. Is it there? They're making a claim for it. Referee doesn't signal. The referee doesn't move. They're livid. <laughs> the 
Chova Hanley into his bigger body. Just under Chova. Nick one. Goes across the goal mode and into the goal with a deflection. Nick one flips. It's 2 1. We suspected this would happen. Saddles had the pressure. Saddles had the momentum. Yes, it was happening. Game now. on. It was really happening. Saddles enjoying um, great amount of pressure, enjoying great amount of possession, and it eventually had to come. So Saddles will be able to pull one back. Um, this could 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 create um, a situation where Garden Haspels could be in some trouble if they don't um, tidy up themselves and, and get. In the days of the match, St. Peter's edged Mantap 1-0. The goal coming from Kareem Simmons in the 36th minute. Kijani David of St. Peter's was issued a red card in the 27th minute. And Kadeem Lawi was also sent off from Mantab in the 89th minute, both for serious foul play. Male Egyptian boxers have achieved remarkable ranks in Africa and across the world. However, the same cannot be said for female boxing. Unfortunately, Al Tirsana Club has the oldest women's boxing team in Egypt and lately they've been building up a growing team of male, female fighters. Here's CGTN's Adel Marouki with more. While boxing has been facing resistance among female players, Al Tirsena here has been way ahead of its Egyptian competitors. The club has built an arsenal of women boxers that have now become the hope for the country's future in the sport. <laughs> The club's mission is to build children, boys or girls, through sports they learn to accept each other. In Alter Sana, we believe in women empowerment through sports. Teaching the girls self-defense sports builds their character. None of Egypt's most recognized clubs in football have a women boxing team. Alter Sana, however, has never lost hope for the sport to flourish. The club has built a team of 60 young women whom it hopes to be the foundation for the Egyptian national team. We had a culture crisis. Egyptians didn't want their girls to play boxing. Parents and girls get scared. It's a girl and she will get hit in the face or get injured. That is hard to accept. But in the past three years, this has been changing. We have been working with kids from a very young age. We raise them and shape their understanding about this sport. To build this big team of women boxers, Al Tirsana utilized its 100 years of experience to make the sport appealing for women. After joining the team, the ladies have become advocates for changing their friends' perspective about the sport. The sport gave me great confidence. It made me try different things in life. I'm no longer afraid. I can walk with confidence in the street even at night. I'm a girl and I can go out at night on my own. I was very fat. When I joined college, I weighed 100 kilograms. I wanted to lose weight and I had boxing does that. Once I started, I fell in love and couldn't let go of the sport. I began to lose weight and now I'm a champion. I made a lot of my friends join the boxing team. If they don't want to play sports, I convince them that at least they'll learn to defend themselves. Egypt has not joined women boxing in the last two African competitions. The country didn't even consider fighting for a ticket for the Tokyo Olympics. But that is about to change. With utter focus, each of these girls now has a dream. They want to become the first to represent Egypt in the Olympics and it seems nothing can stand in their way to pursue that dream. Adel Mahroui, CGTN, Cairo. And that's it for sports. When we come back, we'll have another look at the stories that made the headlines. And we're wrapping up with a recap of the top stories. State of emergency extended until December 31st. Prime Minister Harris to preside over annual budget estimates committee meetings this week. And Department of Agriculture honors the Federation's food heroes. And that's the end of the Zadaiser Channel 5 newscast. Thank you for joining us. I'm Calla Berridge. Bye.